channel. Thank you so much for watching Miss Angel TV, where we talk about everything. And when I mean everything, I mean like. It's been a minute since I've talked about this. <laughs> It's been a minute, it's been a minute, and it, it feels refreshing to actually have this conversation. But before we get into the video, y'all already know what to do. If you're new here, hey boo, how you doing? I'm getting ready to tell y'all an update on my mama. My mama did some time in jail. Boo, I, I broke down. I broke it down to the nitty, to the motherfucking gritty. You want to go and check that story time series out before you check out this video? Feel free to do so. I will go ahead and pin um, somewhere somehow <laughs> the playlist i made a whole playlist so this series got buku episodes um i want to say it's like 18 or something like that i'll correct myself in the, the video edit as i'm editing this video it's my longest series that i've ever done a lot of y'all have been asking like angie angelique what's going on with your mama like you told us you you broke it down honey you you gave us a whole 18 part or however many part series and you ain't come back and tell us shit like you ain't what the fuck <laughs> so yeah you're right um i think i left off like at this point in my life my mom was actually still in jail so i ended the series with her being in jail i'm not mistaken she was still in there um was she yeah she was definitely still in there i think my mom she actually got out of jail when did she get out she got out right before i had my baby no she got out after i had him actually so yeah it was the year after so my mama got out of jail the year of covid so my mama finally was released from jail um october of 2020 um a little backstory you really need to go look at the series but a little backstory real quick um mama started out good um perfectly normal ended up meeting this girl ended up having a lesbian relationship for over 10 years and it was a, a secret well it, it was a secret well she thought it was secret but bitch the family already kind of knew what was going on um they broke up my mama mind just kind of went crazy mentally um she started acting out doing stuff lighting shit on fire and when i mean shit i don't mean trash i mean shit um what else she did a couple of drugs or whatever met this young ass dude mama so my mama told me that my daddy wasn't dead um, my mama even thought she was janet jackson's love child long story short my mama went through a lot of mental crisis um a lot of mental issues we didn't know that my mama had mental issues until this occurred my mama had a good ass paying job was doing good for herself but she let it go she let her she let her mind take over and ultimately landed herself in jail the last time she was in jail she actually went to jail most of the time the last time she went to jail was for sleeping with a 14 year old um and i know y'all probably like bitch what i know you didn't just casually just say that girl yeah i did like the fuck is my life it happened a long time ago who gives a fuck it is what it is i am i'm not ashamed of it i'm not ashamed of my mama i'm not ashamed of her story i'm not ashamed bitch i will tell this story a million times in a row and then go call my mama and ask her what the fuck she doing <laughs> i ain't gonna lie i used to be though i kind of used to be embarrassed about it um whenever the situation first occurred but now that i'm older now that i'm especially old enough to understand um not to say that i am justifying anything that my mama did because i ain't bitch and i didn't if y'all know i talk my shit i talk my shit th throughout that entire story time series so um i'm not at any point um justifying what she did but i'm just telling y'all i i'm at a point in my life where i understand and I'm, and I'm able to actually move forward with my life and my relationship with my mama because i really thought that my mom and i would never have another relationship again like i really thought that our relationship was doomed it was no coming back to it you know but i was wrong if i can remember correctly the last situation i stopped on was uh, she was still in jail and i was like reading her letters to y'all i think that was the very last video that i did actually before she actually got released her and i started to somewhat rekindle our relationship and that was i feel like mainly it was because i was pregnant with my at the time fourth child and um this would have been the second child that my mom wasn't really truly in my life to experience because back in 2018 whenever i had my 
third child girl I had a lot of kids <laughs> but when I had my third child she wasn't around that's when she was still dealing with what she was dealing with and so this time this go around she wanted to be involved even though even though she couldn't physically be there because at the time she was locked up or incarcerated but um we gradually started talking I don't remember exactly how we started back talking. I know it had something to do with my grandma because at the time my grandma was the only one communicating with my mama um, before my mom and I got back on our speaking terms. And I would talk to my grandma regularly and my grandma like mentioned it to me and like asked me if I was open to a conversation. And um, at the time I was and I'm glad that I had that conversation because ever since then my mom and I have been closer than ever. Moving forward to when she got out of jail, October of 2020 and by the way whenever COVID started happening my mama ended up catching COVID in jail and it was it was crazy uh I was really really scared for her and then because I didn't know like, COVID was new to all of us and I didn't know like what the fuck that was gonna be about or come to like bitch at this point bitch we thought the whole world was coming to an end you know what I'm saying so I didn't I was scared I was scared the fact that I couldn't lay hands on her or anything like that it was nerve-wracking to deal with having a loved one incarcerated during COVID and stuff like that but we got through it so um upon her release she knew that she would be on probation not parole but probation it was under the condition that she would be released she would have had to immediately register herself as a sex offender and i thought that once you are a sex offender it's like kind of for everything but my mama told me she has to register as a sex offender for like the next 20 years i think um but yeah it's a, it's a, regardless of the fact it's a long as motherfucking time, bitch, it don't matter how long it's for. It's a long time. That was tough. That was tough, but we already kind of knew that was coming anyways because leading up to her sentence because she ultimately did about two years in jail. Well, she did two years in jail. That was the longest my mom had ever been in jail because prior to her being incarcerated this last time, she was like in and out of jail. And I think before that, the longest she had been in jail was probably like a couple months to a year, but it was not two years, bitch. And so, um, we knew that whenever she got out, she had to register as a sex offender. Now, she, at this time, we, we wasn't sure what we were going to do about housing for her. Like we were looking at different i guess you can call it like a halfway house type shit i don't know just for people who just got out of jail like we were looking at things like that but we just didn't trust those type of people and we didn't want her to be around the wrong crowd and so ultimately long story short my grandma ended up welcoming my mom into her home and so um my grandma had to like she had to give the probation people my grandma's address they had to do what they have to do and all of that and so boom she gets out of jail and we had everything lined up for her she had her phone we made sure she had a phone we also knew that she had to turn she had to go into probation every month pay a, a probation fee every month she also had to take some type of class every single month and pay for that as well like that's one thing about getting out of jail like they don't make it easy for your ass like bitch you know i've been in jail for the past 100 years the fuck you think i'm gonna get a fucking job tomorrow and pay y'all like that's that's just crazy but I, I honestly feel like they make it to where they set you up for failure in a way i feel like that's what the system is designed to do it's really just to set your set your ass up for failure like bitch you wanted to get in trouble you got your ass in trouble you shouldn't have motherfucker did it so now you gotta deal with us forever <laughs> that's honestly how i feel that it's set up it's set up to i guess discourage you from you know going down the wrong path but you know a, a lot of that shit don't mean nothing to people whenever they actually in the midst of doing wrong so but outside of her having to register as a sex offender one of her conditions was she also could not get on social media so um which was i mean i guess it's not strange i've never heard of it before but at the same time i can understand like who wants a sex offender to be um on social media so i get it um just as just like she is not allowed like a certain amount of yards or whatever from a park or um from a school as well the whole social media part was kind of discouraging from mom because like you know social media is how we 
communicate with family these days, long lost friends, all of that. Um, following her release, my grandma made sure to set her up with doctor's appointments. I actually think my grandma had these doctor's appointments already set up for my mama before she even got out of jail, to be honest. But we were like making sure she had insurance, Medicaid, all of that shit. Because we knew, okay, yeah, she's on medication in jail, but they're not going to allow her to go home with that medication. As a, no, as a matter of fact, I'm lying. I think they did actually allow her to go home with medication, but it wasn't much. It was probably like a month's supply, if that. Uh, maybe even two weeks, girl. I don't remember. It's been a long time. But I do r remember that she went home. She came home with some medication. But we knew that she needed to follow up with the doctor as soon as possible. That way she can continue to be on that medication. Because her medication is everything, right? She has, you know, mental health issues, bipolar, manic depression, all of that. She has these health issues that needs to be under control. And in order for us to prevent her from spiraling down like she did in these previous years, we have to make sure that she got on medication, bitch. Like, we have to make sure, like, mama, you need to take your medicine now. <laughs> take your meds. <laughs> so, um, so my grandma made sure she did that. She followed up with um, doctors. She got her medicine. She does take a lot of medication. I will tell you that because um, not only outside of the mental health thing, she also has high blood pressure. And so she's taking that medication and all of that shit as well on top of all of that. So at this point, my mom and my grandma, they're living together. My grandma, she has her own house um, in Lafayette, Louisiana, actually. So they're both in Lafayette, Louisiana um, together. And um, I wish it was closer, honestly, I do. I wish they both were closer, but it's just like three hours away. It's nothing. But I was really appreciate of my grandma for stepping up how, like she did like my grandma she's a widow you know she's just by herself on a fixed income you know doing all of this for my mama making sure that she gets to her classes because she got to report to um class once a month she got to report the probation officer once a month she got to pay fees and all of that so whenever she first got out me and my grandma like went half on the fees uh, we also went half on her phone bill as well for a while um because you know mama just got out of jail we knew obviously she wasn't working and we really didn't think that she would be able to work either um to be quite honest because at this point my mom she had gained a lot of weight like you would think in jail you lose weight but a lot of people gain weight in jail um, honestly and my mom gained weight and she was she is the biggest she's ever been before and so that caused other health issues as well with her like she's not able to walk for long periods of time stuff like that until she gets the weight off because my mom she mama have really just been small like you know like me like not as small as me a little thicker but you know what i'm saying my mama has always been just a fine sized woman the moment she got out of jail she filed for social security and girl they denied her like twice um i don't know why it's so hard for people to get social security these days i don't under, i mean i understand it but i don't at the same time um but like, recently a couple months ago she actually went to a court hearing um to appeal it she appealed her disability so hopefully that gets approved she she went to the court and they talked about something it could take up three months for a fucking decision like bitch i went to court i didn't told y'all why i came up for work why is it gonna take y'all three months to say yay or nay like the fuck she honestly had been working so hard um doing so good like before then i would be kind of nervous as to if she's gonna relapse or Whenever I say relapse, I don't mean like drugs or anything. I just mean like go back to the how she was before. I used to be really, really nervous about that. But this time, this go around, like I don't feel that. I don't feel like my mom, she knows her triggers now. Um, before then, like she would pop off. Like, you know, any little inconvenience, any little thing, you know, she popping off. But my mom, she's no longer like that. Um, she she has self-control now all around she's just really doing good my mom and my grandma they've came out here multiple times since she's been out the same month she got out of jail the same was the same month that her and my grandma took a trip to houston to see us now uh, my mom she has to like report to probation anytime she travels out here and i think they give her 30 days for the entire year 
that she's able to like request a travel pass or whatever and her bond with the kids was like no other mind y'all my two youngest children at the time um junior and gavin they had never seen her in person but they had talked to her over the phone or on the phone um and knew like i you know explained to her or i explained to them like yeah that's your grandma or Gigi. that's what they called my mom whenever they seen her in person it was as if like they've seen her a million times before everything just felt natural and just felt normal and i was really really happy about that because i was kind of nervous like uh i wonder you know how the kids gonna react like i knew my two oldest my two oldest were familiar with, with mom um they kind of already knew she was in jail or whatever they didn't know why per se but um i was just you know a little bit skeptical about how that would be but girl they bonded like no other child the fuck you can't tell them shit about their gg okay y'all know i just gave birth to another baby a year ago and my mama came out here whenever i gave birth and she stayed out here with me for almost a month and then she left because she had to go back she couldn't stay too too long well no she i'm lying she didn't stay out here for a month it felt like a month she stayed out here for like two weeks but um she stayed out here for two weeks and then she left and then came back the month later and helped me again like she helped me so much whenever i first had my baby it's something that i've never had before outside of whenever i had my first daughter because obviously i was 16 so my mama was around to help me um but as an adult that was the first time that i had my mom at my side you know helping me in my postpartum phase and she cooked she got the kids up for school she'll be texting me she'll be like uh bring my baby here so you can go do what you gotta do or you can go take a nap like she she enjoyed him so so much y'all and i was so so happy that she was able to experience that one last time because bitch i ain't have no more kids okay um I ain't having them all so i was just unfortunately she wasn't able to be there for the labor and delivery because that boy that baby had other plans and we're going to discuss that soon if we haven't discussed it already i don't know when y'all gonna see this video but i am gonna do it in detail labor and delivery story for y'all but she was there y'all she was there and i i cannot express how appreciative i was of that because like four years ago you could not tell me that i was gonna have a um a good relationship with my mom again and i don't know why i'm getting emotional it just made me really really happy to know that um, i was able to experience that bond with my mom if you watch my actual series you know i struggle with um getting my mom's attention you know as i was growing up as a teenager she was in a relationship with this woman child that she claimed was just her best friend kind of find out she was her actual lover but i kind of already figured that but just me telling my story like as i was telling expressing that in that story time and let me know if y'all want me to go into detail because i'm not sure i'm not sure how in detail i went in that whole relationship i think that was honestly that was just one video that i kind of discussed the whole dynamic but um she was literally in a relationship with this woman for 10 years and i you know according to her they were just best friends and just you know roommates and stuff like she had her own room um had her own room but she really wasn't sleeping in her room she was in my mama room because bitch they was fucking <laughs> um but i'm just saying that to say like i fought for my mom's attention for the longest for the longest because y'all know i didn't grow up with a dad um my dad passed away when i was nine well i can't say i didn't grow up with a dad because i grew up until i was nine with a dad but at the age of nine i lost my dad so um and i actually lost my dad ironically to hiv i've talked about this early early on in my youtube career like early early on about the whole roommate situation y'all know that roommate she contracted hiv and stuff like that and that probably was another reason why i really went so hard on her because like bitch like i my daddy died from aids bitch like <laughs> and i say aids because i believe it was full-blown aids at that point i i do know there is a difference between hiv and aids but i'm just like i don't have a parent because of that and yet you out here fucking and sucking willingly yeah you might be undetectable but bitch she's still got it and it's not gonna go away the moment she stopped taking that medicine the moment that the numbers gonna rise the fuck up so 
yeah like I, I took that so personal because of that as well and i don't think i really understood that until probably just now <laughs> so anyways going back to what i was saying my mom has really just been an amazing part of my life she's helped me so much in so many ways over these last couple of years what we're on um this year would make year four that she's been out of jail and so um i'm just so proud of her like, as far as my mom's love life i don't really know too too much about it um other than what she tell me and my mom be spilling tea bitch <laughs> every night my mama called me we talk on the phone every every single night after the news go off mom called me we talk every single night and she has mentioned like a few dates she's been on and stuff like that but nobody's serious and honestly i don't think my mom is really truly like actively looking for anybody anyway because at the end of the day she still got to get her shit together um she's still you know not having any like steady income coming in right now like she d did do a couple of side jobs or whatever um working with one of our family members but that really wasn't no money but she's not in a bind to where she need anything or anything like that because luckily my grandma has been able to like take care of her and really provide i'm so grateful for my grandma as well because honestly if it wasn't for my grandma i don't think i would have been able to do as much as my grandma well i know for a fact that i would not have been able to do as much as my grandma have done for my mama just simply because bitch i got a lot of kids like i got a husband i got a whole family of my own so being that my grandma you know my grandma just has herself to think about you know what I'm saying? It's a lot easier for her to help my mom than it is for me. So I really, really am so grateful for my grandma as well. Because if it wasn't for her, girl, I don't know. Okay? I know some of y'all may be wondering, do your mama know you made 18 or however many videos about her? I think she do. I'm pretty sure she do. And I say this because my grandma follows me on Instagram and all of that. Whenever I post, I'm pretty sure my grandma's telling her. Um... And a long, long time ago, my mama had mentioned, she asked me something about my YouTube. I think she was just casually asking, like, you know, are you still doing YouTube? Like, how are your YouTube going and stuff like that? And I just kind of, you know, brushed it off. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, it's going good or whatever. It's a story that had to be told. And I don't know who you're helping. You know, you, you never know who's watching. You never know how your story can impact the next person. So, and ultimately, overall, I'm just so proud of her. So, mama, if you're watching this, because I know... My family members be watching my videos. They just don't be saying shit. <laughs> hey, y'all. Um, but if you're watching this, mama, I just want to tell you, I am so proud of you. I love you. And I, I'm i rooting for you. Like, you got this girl. As long as you got me, you got it. You got it all. Okay? <laughs> but that being said, comment y'all thoughts. Comment what y'all think. Um, like I said, if you aren't truly familiar with the whole dynamic as to what happened with my mama, how she went from downhill. I told the story from the beginning, like before she, you know, while she was normal, before she started acting out. And oh, like I literally told y'all how it happened. So if y'all want to know how my mama went from being a corporate baddie to a prison baddie, then <laughs> go ahead and watch that series. That playlist is called Mommy Issue Series or something like that. Like I said, I'll go ahead and put it down in the comment section um, and in the description of the video. So, other than that, um, that's it. Let me know if y'all have any questions, anything I didn't cover. That's pretty much it that I can think about. But if y'all have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comment section. I would love to answer those. If you didn't do so in the beginning of the video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and stop being a weirdo and stop watching from the sideline. I love y'all so much and I'm gonna see y'all in my next video. Peace.